Good evening and welcome to each one to another edition of the ASI Hour. I'd like to welcome you each this evening and thank you for taking the time to join us. I know that uh, you're all busy, but I pray that our time together will be a blessing uh, this evening. And uh, with us this evening is Chris Matz. And uh, Chris has uh, shared with us on the ASI Hour before, if you've joined us uh, previously. And uh, we just look forward to the wealth of, of knowledge and experience that Chris has to share with us on uh, topics like uh, media and promoting things. And I would like to just ask that each of you uh, take a moment to share with us where you're joining from in the chat. Uh, if you're joining for the first time, welcome uh, in the, the uh, Demio platform here. You'll notice off to your right, uh, there's a chat um, section that you can just type in where you're joining us from. And uh, we'd love to see where everybody's from this evening. So uh, I'd like to also let everybody know that the ASI convention will be taking place uh, this year. And so I'd like to direct you to the ASI website to register for that. And we'd love to see each one of you uh, join us there. And uh, we're really excited that that's gonna take place. And as well, um, I would just like to encourage everyone to join us next week again for the ASI Hour. James Hartley will be sharing a very, very practical uh, topic, how to uh, use home remedies um, to uh, just maintain health and, and sickness. And so very practical topic. So uh, please join us for that. Chris, uh, really looking forward to what you're going to share with us this evening. Uh, before we begin, I'll just uh, start with a word of prayer. And uh, let's just bow our heads and do that now. Dear Father, we're just so grateful for the opportunity to come together again for another ASI Hour. We thank you for really this opportunity, Lord, um, to learn and to grow, to be challenged. And so I pray that in our time together this evening, you would bless Chris as he shares with us. Help us to be eager listeners and, and learners and uh, not just uh, stopping there, Lord, but to put into practice uh, the practical tips that are shared, shared with us this evening. And so, Father, we invite you to be with us here at this time. And thank you again for this opportunity in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Curtis. Appreciate that. All right. Wonderful. Well, thank you, everybody, for taking the time to join tonight. Uh, looks like we've got people joining in from all over the place, which is very exciting. Um, I love technology because it brings us all together. Um, like this, where we can talk and share ideas and have community, and it's just a blessing. Um, so my name is Chris Matz. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, I'll get a little bit into um, who I am and my background and stuff. But first, I just really want to appeal to you guys uh, to sign up and register for ASI um, convention. It's happening in Orlando, Florida, um, August 4th through 7th. You're not going to want to miss it. I absolutely love ASI um, convention. And uh, for me, my favorite thing about it is the community aspect. I love being able to connect with like-minded people who um, have a passion for business and ministry and using them as a vehicle to finish the work. So uh, please make sure that you take some uh, serious consideration uh, to sign up and register to attend. I hope to see you there. I'd love to meet you guys in purpose. Person, I'll be there and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a great time. Um, so my background, uh, I became an Adventist about five years ago now. And prior to that, I had really no religious um, upbringing or uh, background or experience. And I've always been very passionate about being an entrepreneur. Um, I was the kid who would go to school with a backpack full of gum and candy and trying to sell it to other students on recess and during lunch and getting in trouble by my teachers and you know i'd take a, a wagon and fill it up with water and uh, soda and take it down to the local festivals and sell it to the kids who are riding the rides at the carnivals and so i've always kind of been uh that way um as i got older i got pulled into entrepreneurship in a different way i got sucked into a multi-level marketing um, you know pyramid scheme type of thing. And um, I was 17 years old, I dropped $500 on the starter pack, which at the time was all the money in my bank account. And I did the traditional method of trying to get people to sign up uh, to recruit them to build the pyramid with me. Um, all of my friends and family uh, said no. 
And I basically was at square one with no money and I had no product because they all tried it and didn't want it, anything to do with it. So I had to figure out how to um, basically use uh, another form of advertising and marketing to try to build that business and get my money back. And so that's how I discovered multi-level or discovered online advertising was through multi-level marketing when I was like 17 years old. And that uh, pulled me into a lot of really interesting things. I actually got pulled into the new age movement as a result. Um, as I was growing in that company, um, I had ended up recruiting over a hundred different people and made a decent amount of money. And um, I was moving up and the leaders were giving me these different books to read these self-help style books. And, you know, at the, the base of it was a lot of spiritualism. Um, and you know, I had no religious you know, background. So I was really just susceptible of, uh, you know, being sucked into these types of things. And so I started practicing the new age religion. I got really into um, all the different things there, um, which really opened my mind up to spirituality. And from there, I got uh, really interested in religion as a whole. I got a whole other journey of how I ended up becoming a Christian and then eventually becoming an Adventist, um, which I'll save that for another time. But um, along the way, when I came into the church, God opened up different doors of how I could use my previous talents through uh, online advertising and digital marketing and sales to also serve Him. And so I started using my uh, talent to help ministries and businesses. And God just opened up the door. My company, Advent Digital Marketing, was born. And I started working with a lot of the larger ministries in the church and then also with quite a few for-profit um, businesses who are owned by Adventists as well. And so now I have a team of, of people who work with me um, who also service these clients and different projects. So it's been a blessing. God has really you know, changed my life and um, it's been an amazing journey. Um, but tonight, what I want to share with you guys is an amazing opportunity for ministries and businesses in this space of advertising and social media marketing, and really at the end of the day, converting your potential prospects, customers, or donors, and how we should be looking like um, at that from a strategic point of view. Um, first, I kind of want to ask you guys and just throw out a this idea, um, if you were to uh, have 10 people approach you and each one of them asked you uh, if they could loan $100 from you and only one of them was someone that you knew, one of them was your friend, the other nine were complete strangers, the person that you'd be most likely to give the donation or get, loan the $100 to would be your friend. It'd be the person that you had a previous relationship with. And this is because you have a relationship with them and the others are strangers. And this is exactly how sales at a high level works. Um, you end up converting people who have a relationship with you. And your ability to build a relationship with people will really determine um, the success of, of your sales, whether this is for a ministry, if this is, you know, for profit or nonprofit, um, if you're trying to sell goods and services, or if you're trying to recruit donors to support your ministry, you need to have a relationship with people. I want you to think about the, you know, top customers that you have, the people who spend the most money with your business, people who buy the most products and the most services, or if you're a ministry, the people who uh, donate the most money and who refer their friends and tell everybody else about your ministry, those people are most likely people that you have a good relationship with. And you probably had a good relationship with them before uh, they even became a donor. And um, this is not really rocket science. It's nothing that is a, you know, some crazy idea. Um, Jesus knew that this was the best method. You know, he spent a lot of time building a relationship with people um, before he actually asked them to follow him. You know, in Christ's method of evangelism, Ellen White kind of lays out this blueprint where she says that Jesus ministered to others as one who desired their good. In turn, this won their confidence. And once 
uh, he won their confidence, he had influence over them, he was then able to make an appeal. And they were more susceptible of responding positively to that appeal because he had uh, done the pre-work, the front end work of building the relationship. Um, so I'm, I'm really wanting to beat this drum with you guys tonight that it's so important to build relationships with your audience, with your market, because um, this is really the strategy that I have seen trump everything else. It is, it has been more successful than you know a really fancy, beautiful website or an amazing logo or um, even very surprisingly the best products. Uh, you can have all of those things and be struggling as a business. You can have the best mission and be struggling um, as a ministry if you don't have a good relationship with your audience. And um, I've done a lot of testing over the past few years, spent a lot of money on advertising, and I've made my clients a lot of money through advertising. And the thing that the trend that I notice over and over and over and over again, regardless of the situation, is that the organization who already has a lot of relationship with their audience always sells more products and services and has higher profit margins. And for the ministries, they always have um, a higher conversion rate when it comes to acquiring donors or uh, acquiring more donations from existing donors. It's all about the relationship. Now, um, you could spend a lot of time uh, you know, going one-on-one, -on -one, calling people, emailing them, texting them, or meeting with them in person and building a relationship that way. And that's a great way to build a relationship. I am uh, very old fashioned like that. I love face-to-face -face networking. Um, you know, those have been some of the most fruitful types of relationship building that I've done. But one of the things that is really, uh, I believe an amazing opportunity, whether you're a big business, small business, big ministry, small ministry, for you right now in 2021 is your ability to be able to build a relationship at scale with an audience. Um, your ability to build a relationship with millions of people um, without having to one-on-one -on -one have those types of conversations, but almost digitize yourself through, through maybe a video or a graphic written content, graphic content, video content, and being able to get that in front of uh, hundreds of thousands or millions of people. And the way that I want to recommend to you guys to do this is through uh, buying ads on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube could be very effective for this, depending on your situation. If you're trying to target Adventists, Facebook and Instagram are going to be your best ways of doing that. Uh, if you're a for-profit company and you've got a really wide audience, you can try a lot of different platforms. But regardless, you want to be buying ads on these platforms. Now, um, you can be spending, if you're a smaller business or ministry, you can be spending you know, $100 a month. And most people can afford that. And that $100 can allow you to reach tens of thousands of people every single year. And if you were to put out content, um, video form or written or graphics that simply just provide your audience with value, simply just uh, give them information, education, and uh, build a relationship with them, uh, they will then know who you are. That's step one. They have to know who you are. And then two, they'll start developing something called rapport. They'll start liking you, trusting you, respecting you. And it makes it so much easier when you go in for the close down the road, when you go in for the, the ask to actually have them buy something. See, most people are doing it backwards and they spend way too much time and energy through advertising initiatives where they're asking people to buy things. And this is something that's happening way too early on in the process. Uh, you know, when you are, you know, dating, uh, I'm married now, I'm recently married, but when you're in the dating phase, you don't start off with date one trying to 
uh, get them to marry you. You know, that doesn't work well. You, you're trying to sell or close way too early, right? You've got to, you know, romance your consumer a little bit uh, in order to have a really successful conversion rate down the line. And it's the same thing uh, with what we're talking about here. If you want to acquire more donors in the future, if you want to sell more products and services, then you need to build a relationship with your audience uh, beforehand. And so using, you know, Facebook ads and YouTube and Instagram can be an amazing way for you to uh, very inexpensively get your face, your name, your story, uh, your information in front of a large audience and do it on a very regular basis so that they have that rapport and it makes your sell easier. You'll be surprised, and I was surprised even at this, where I run my own ads and I do target Adventists, business owners and ministry leaders, and I will be in meetings and um, bump into people and they will tell me that they you know, saw me on Facebook or Instagram or showing up in their newsfeed uh, from an ad that I targeted them with. And if I'm presenting a proposal to that business who I've already been building a relationship with, they have more likelihood of converting into a paying client of mine than it just being a very cold audience who has never heard of me before. Uh, they're not familiar with me, my story, my background, and you know the success that I've had with my clients. Uh, it's a harder sell there. So um, this is the drum that I really wanted to beat on here tonight is uh, your opportunity to do this for the cost is just, it is absolutely amazing. Um, there is very few uh, ministries in the, the space of Adventism and businesses who are taking full advantage of this. I'll be very transparent with you. Um, you know, when, when you put out content, the expectation isn't necessarily that you need to be having the most fancy camera or something like that. You can be using your cell phone just like this. And you can be, uh, you know, simply demonstrating expertise, uh, talking about, you know, what, what you can do and how you can help people, um, sharing your story, sharing testimonies of others that you've helped. You can take pieces of information like that and literally record it on a cell phone, put it on social media, and put a little bit of money behind it, 20 30 40 50 dollars and target your audience and have that video just going in the background all the time, building a relationship with people. You can sit there, you can respond to some of the comments. And when you go in later on to try to close them into a, a sale, it's gonna be more effective because they already like, trust, and respect you. What I see, um, I see a question coming in from Sharon. Will we be offering a seminar a ASI? Um, I have not been asked to do that. So no, uh, not to my knowledge, I won't be. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of information that um, I can share with you guys if you wanna reach out to me, I can provide you with my, my website, uh, www.adventdigitalmarketing.com. I'll drop it in the chat box for you guys too. Um, but yeah, if you are doing what I'm saying here with putting content out there and targeting your audience, um, you can um, you can really build a relationship a lot faster because of the scale, the ability to scale, putting money behind it, reaching thousands of people a week um, instead of you know, simply trying to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations. And then here's the really cool thing with the technology is that you can go into these platforms and create an audience of people who've been engaging with your previous content, with your previous videos, with your previous uh, you know, graphics and other pieces of content. You can create an audience of those people and then you can target those specific people with another type of ad, which is an ad that's gonna start going for the close. It's gonna tee up for the pitch now and go for the close. And uh, it's gonna be more effective that way. Um, most businesses and ministries uh, think uh, in terms of you know acquiring a customer, customer acquisition campaigns, in terms of 
them just putting out an ad that says, you know, become a donor, become a customer right here and now. And think about that from the consumer standpoint. Um, most of them have never heard of you before. They have no idea who you are. They don't trust you yet. So most of them don't even sc uh, stop scrolling, right? Or most of them don't even pay attention. They take the mailer, they throw it away. They don't pay attention in any sense. So um, what you wanna do is warm them up beforehand so that they respond better when you actually are trying to sell them. That's the whole idea here. I know it's so simple, but it works so well. Um, the organizations that have come on and work with me who already have been doing this to some degree, nine times out of 10, we find amazing success with them. And we can sell, acquire donors, do whatever uh, the objective is for them. It's so much easier. The companies and organizations that come and try to work with us who have you know, they haven't done their due diligence and trying to build a relationship with their audience, and they just want us to run a campaign to acquire customers or donors. Those people don't have as much success because they haven't done that, that front end work of actually building a relationship. So this is an investment of, you know, a little bit of your time, a little bit of your money to do this, but it will pay off. Um, it'll pay off uh, in so many different ways. Uh, we've got Roland asking a question here of how do I target the audiences? Um, so yeah, there's a lot of technical things here. Um, if you have a Facebook business manager account, you can get one of those at business.facebook.com. Inside of there, uh, you can run ads and there's different ways of creating audiences, um, but I'll go over a few of the different ways. There's one way where you can select based on different interest categories um, inside of Facebook. There are different categories based on if you are a, you know, let's say a Christian or a Seventh-day Adventist, or if you're interested in you know, business, or if you're interested in a specific book or whatever. There's so many, there's millions of these different types of interests. Um, you can target those types of people. And that's great because, um, that's gonna be primarily a cold audience, people who've never heard of you before. But then there's other ways to target people. There's ways where you can target people if they recently visited your website. There's a little code you can install on your website where you can target people if they've recently visited. Now we know this is gonna be a warmer audience. And if they've already been you know, kind of in your world, checking you out, visiting your website, we know they're probably gonna convert a little bit higher than the person who has never heard of you before, right? Um, there's some other ways of doing it. You can target people based on uh, if they've interacted with your Facebook page or your Instagram account. Um, you can also target them if they've interacted with your previous videos or other forms of content that you've been putting out. And you can get pretty specific. You know, if you've got some videos going out on a regular basis, you can target your audience based on their percentage of time they've spent watching. So if you know um, you've got, you know, out of 10,000 people who've watched a, a video you put out, let's say a thousand, so 10% of that has watched that video 50% of the time or more, you can put those people in their own audience and target those people with a specific ad. And the value in that is, you know, the people who have watched more of your content have a higher level of intent and interest They're higher candidates They're The lead is warmer, right? And so, these people are gonna be more likely to purchase uh, or convert than people who watch three seconds of the video and scroll, and they, they probably don't even remember you. So um, this is really important because you're casting the net wide in the beginning, targeting these cold audiences, these interest-based audiences, and you're getting those audiences to become a warm audience by watching your videos, by interacting with your content, by going to your website. And once they've done those different things, we now take them from that cold bucket and they're in this warm bucket. They've put themselves there by interacting their own behaviors. Once they're in this warm bucket of people who are watching your videos and engaging with you and you know visiting your website, we can now set up campaigns that target them uh, based on those behaviors. And you now set up this journey where people are interacting with you and they're coming into your world and they're just learning about you. 
and then they're um, doing different types of things that reveal that they're progressing in the relationship. They're they're farther down the line, and you treat these people differently. You shouldn't be marketing to the people who don't know about you the same way as the people who do know about you. Do you talk to strangers the same way you talk to your friends? Probably not. So it's the same way in business, um, in marketing. Uh, you want to communicate to these people based on their behaviors, what they're doing, uh, where they're fitting in in the funnel, whether they're you know just coming into the funnel, just figuring out who you are, or they're way down at the bottom of the funnel. They've maybe even purchased some of your products. They've attended um, some of your your webinars, or they've they've done these different things. You're going to market to those audiences very differently. So um, to hit the point one more time, uh, for those I know some are just joining, um, you want to um, make sure that you're keeping your funnel full. And that's what I'm talking to you guys about today. You keep your funnel full by constantly building relationships with new people all the time. Um, most people in traditional business, they start up a business and they go with their warm market first. This means that they're going to people who um, maybe their family members, their friends, uh, people that are closest to them. And they can create a, a list of those people and they go through all of those names and they run out. You always tap out your warm audience at some point. And if you've tapped out your warm audience and you're now in a place where you're having a hard time getting new customers, it's because you're not keeping your funnel full. It's because you're not constantly building relationships with your uh you know, audience to get them into the funnel in the first place. So keep your funnel full and keep building relationships. Um, Alfred uh, sent us a question here. So a retired pastor, um, Mestay Mission Work, does a lot of ministry, um, praying through mobile and Zoom worship, doesn't have the proper technology equipment to do more uh, but no funds of my own. Can someone help me funds to purchase equipment for my ministry, my email? Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Um, there's some organizations that are in place to help here with this, um, different things. So we can, we can pass this along. Uh, maybe Curtis could chime in on this towards the end too, but, um, yeah, even, even just the littlest amount, and you, there are ways to do it for free. What I'm telling you tonight is like the quickest, easiest, uh, cheapest uh, way without, uh, you know, to get results really quickly and, you know, to have something that's predictable. When you're paying Facebook and, and Google and YouTube and all these platforms to build a relationship with people, this is predictable. This is predictable. When you're relying on organic, that's not predictable. I can't, I can't determine how many people are going to um, see my post or see my email or decide to open it. Um, I have very little control over it. There are some things you can do uh, to help the algorithm or increase your open rates and things like that, but that's you know pretty limited. So you're relying on human behavior to uh, basically react and, and hopefully they open the email and hopefully they see the post. You don't have as much control there with paid advertising, buying ads online. Uh, it's way more predictable and you have way more control. It's like a water faucet. I like to go to my water faucet when I'm thirsty, be able to turn it on and get some water. Um, I don't like to sit around, you know, waiting for rain if I'm thirsty. And that's kind of the scenario, uh, people find themselves in. If you want a predictable way to get people in the funnel all day long, you have to be paying for it. And it's not as expensive as you think it is. When you're doing things at a low, you know, a smaller scale with a lower budget, um, you don't even really need to hire companies like mine because uh, you're not doing enough for us to really make a difference. When you've got um, when you've got a large budget and a lot of a bigger scale operation, 
outsourcing to a company like mine and, and paying for that extra service, you're going to get a lot more out of it. But with a lot of smaller ministries and smaller businesses, you can simply set up some ads and buy some, you know, media on these different channels and have ads running for very small budgets, $10, $20, $30 here and there. And it all adds up. If you were just diligent about, you know, hey, I'm going to put $100 into this every single month um, to build a relationship, you would be reaching thousands and thousands and thousands of people every single year. And those people would start knowing who you are and you'd have a relationship with them. So um, that's that's really the drum I wanted to beat with you guys tonight. Uh, I, I know that there's you know so much more we could get into. We're just scratching the surface with these um, things. And you know, sometimes when we're talking about technology, it would be so much more helpful if I could you know, walk you through exactly which button to press and, you know, all these different things. But uh, the reality is, is, you know, some of these things are going to be different depending on what you are doing as a business or ministry. There isn't a cookie cutter, um, you know, exact method that I would recommend besides the one that I'm recommending today, because building a relationship with people, whether you're a big business small business, ministry, if you're in startup mode, it doesn't matter where you're at. Building a relationship with an audience audience is going to give you the biggest return long term. I've just seen this over and over and over again. So um, I just hope that you guys are able to get something out of this. And I really want to encourage you guys to take some action. Um, again, you don't have to have the best equipment or a huge budget to start. Um, you just have to get started. And you don't have to have the highest quality content. Um, what you'll find is you'll start putting out content and your audience will steer you in the right direction. You'll see that they react to certain pieces of content um, more than others. And let that you know, be a note that you take to make more content like the one that they're engaging with. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get. So um, got a question here from Anar. Um, are there good tools, systems you can recommend to quickly find content and make creatives for sharing? Yeah, so um, there's some stock video, stock photo sites. Um, a stock photo site that I use that is free is pexels.com, P-E-X-E-L-S, pexels.com. I really like that one. I find some pretty high quality content um, with that. And then you can take those uh, photos and you can put them into Canva, C A N V A dot com. Canva is a free graphic design tool. It's like a a free version of Photoshop that's way easier to use. And you can put those photos in there and you know play around with that tool and turn them into beautiful graphics if you want to do that. You can also even edit some videos in there as well. Um, but what I'd recommend you know is just simply use a phone. You know if you've got like an iPhone eight or newer. Um, it's got a plenty good enough camera. There's no no reason really to go and spend a bunch of money on you know a big fancy camera, and just start creating, um, and, and hone it in. You know, create a few different videos. They can be short. I would say the optimal length that you should be going for is going to be um, under two minutes. Um, when you're trying to run an ad on Facebook and Instagram. Um, in order for it to show up on Instagram as an ad, it has to be less than two minutes long. Um, in the first three seconds of your content, you need to be opening up with a really strong hook, a big attention gaining device that pulls the person in. Think about the psychology. Someone's sitting there, they're scrolling on their phone a million miles an hour, looking for a random experience. Um, they don't know what's beyond the next scroll. And so you need to pull them in and hook them in um, so get creative with it and, you know, just try to provide value without asking people to do things. Don't ask them to give you money. Don't ask them to buy your thing because that's how people build up buyer's resistance. They, uh, are less likely to buy from you when you ask them to, they're more likely to buy from you when they build a relationship with you, you haven't asked them to, and then you make an appeal later on and they feel almost indebted to you and they want to buy because you've already provided them with so much value on the front end. So, um, yeah, now 
Uh, I'm going to put this, the links for these different sites in here. Um, so I'll put mine, but hey guys, I want to make sure that I can get all of your questions answered. So if I haven't answered a question right now, um, please just uh, put some questions in the, the, the chat here and I'll get to them um, before we jump off here. So that, that one is mine. That's my website. And I'm going to give you guys the stock photos website that I was mentioning. All right. I'm going to give you guys uh, the graphic design tool that I was mentioning. All right. And, uh, you know, in, in business and ministry, um, one last thing I want to talk about here. I, I don't see any questions coming in. One last thing is um, I see a lot of ministries when they, they get to the point where they're or in businesses, they get to the point where they're creating their marketing budgets and they allocate so much marketing budget to, you know, creating a, a beautiful video. Like, wow, we need to spend five, ten thousand dollars on the most beautiful video, or we need to spend fifteen to twenty thousand dollars on the best looking website. And um, I really um, have some opinions about that. If you have a beautiful video that nobody ever sees, I think it's a waste of money. If you have the most amazing website that nobody ever sees, it was a waste of money. So make sure you spend in proportion to those budgets that you're that you're spending a good amount of money advertising, intentionally building a relationship with your audience uh, so that when you have those videos and in, in your website and everything, that people actually see it, that people actually um, you know, get to go to the, the website and, and appreciate it. Uh, because so many times I see, uh, there's so much money being spent on these, these things, but nobody ever, you know, sees them because there's not any effort in building a relationship with your audience. And, um, yeah, so build a relationship. I believe this is biblical. I believe this is what Jesus does. Uh, I believe that, uh, Jesus spends a lot of time building relationship with his audience before he asks them uh, to do things. He seeks us first. And so we need to be doing the same thing um, here with our audience. Um, I do have a training on uh, this uh, type of thing that we're talking about here, but it is in context to local churches. Um, I created a program to help local churches, <laughs> excuse me. I created a program to help local churches be able to use this strategy to get more Bible studies and get more um, people attending their evangelistic series because I know churches are spending a lot of money in advertising and I ran a bunch of tests and, and, and tried a lot of different things that worked really well. So I developed a training to teach them. Um, a ministry and a business could probably go through this training and pull out some pretty, um, solid uh, you know, strategies and, and, and really helpful um, you know, tidbits. But again, it's not specifically for businesses and, and ministries. It's more for a local church. So I'm going to leave that link here for that uh, training in the chat as well. And um, you guys can feel free to check that out. I got a book um, that I, I'm going to give to you guys for free um as well if you if you want i'll send you you can go to this link you get the book for free and then you have an opportunity to access the training it's a paid training um if you want to after you get the free book the free book goes through um some of the things we talked about tonight but again it's more for uh context of local churches so i am going to send you that link there but i'll end here if there's no more questions so i think we're we're good um, i'll end it but um, one last appeal to you guys, make sure you, you follow this, uh, webinar tonight and take some action on this. Um, I know that you guys can find success with this. I've just seen so many find success with it. I personally found a lot of success with the method that I've shared with you tonight. Um, you're going to want to join, uh, next week, ASI hour, James Hartley is a wonderful, amazing person. He's going to be sharing some, uh, home remedies, very effective home remedies for you guys. So you don't want to miss that next week. And again, 
please register for ASI. You don't want to miss this. You know, fellowshipping uh, together and collaborating on ideas. I believe the Holy Spirit brings us together and he's able to work uh, with us and uh, help us come up with good ideas to move this mission forward. So um, that's what ASI is all about. So please take some consideration to, uh, to attend the um, conference this year. So thank you guys so much for joining. Um, it's always a blessing being able to share with you guys and I uh, just appreciate the time. So I'm going to close with prayer and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we're just thankful that you give us businesses, ministries, talents, gifts to be able to serve you with. And we just pray for your wisdom. We know that you know the human mind and heart um, way better than we do. And we lean into you to know how to reach the human mind and the human heart um, to be able to communicate effectively to those we need to communicate to. Um, I just pray a, a blessing upon all, everyone who's attending tonight that you would um, help them wherever they need help and that you would just bless them in whatever way that they need to be blessed. We thank you so much, Lord, for everything you do for us, and we look forward to your soon return. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for attending tonight. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. God bless you.